Well, folks, we are back at the Funhead headquarters. Thank you so much for tuning into Funhead TV. My hair is ridiculous right now. So, in this episode, we're going to pick up exactly where we left off in the last episode and take the heads off this thing. And then we'll go as far as separating the case halves today. We will have this engine completely stripped down today. Let's get into it. All right, Funhead friends and family. So, as you can see, we're still rocking the super tiny sport coat. We're still setting records while doing mechanical work on Porsches while wearing a sport coat. We just push the envelope constantly. In all seriousness, we were picking back up where we left off in the last episode, and that is time to take off the cylinder heads from this thing. We got the cylinder heads all taken down in the last episode, cams, lifters, lifter carrier, etc., etc. We got all that out of the engine. We talked about them a little bit. And then we went into talking about all of the known reliability concerns that can possibly happen over time on an M96, M97 engine. Let's get right into it today and take these cylinder heads off. And then we will go as far as separating the case halves today. We will have this engine completely stripped down today. So you don't wanna miss that. Let's get into it. All right, everybody, you are staring straight down into the cylinder head of bank one. I decided to start with bank one because, well, I just like to do things chronologically for one, but two, bank two is the more... Alright, so I'm gonna actually start out by removing the four little bolts. Uh, don't want to forget about those, obviously. I had already loosened them up ahead of time, so... All right, well, it's time to do the cylinder head bolts. So let's get to it. Oh yeah. You guys, I am really excited and quite anxious to do this right now. This is the first time that these cylinder heads have been off. 111,000 miles, these cylinder heads have never been off this engine. Let's go ahead and do it. Man, they're fighting me. There we go. Hey, those cylinders look pretty good so far. All right, well, you guys are gonna have to be a little bit patient because we're not gonna do a super close analysis of these cylinders quite yet. But just to preface, by the way, I don't expect at all that this engine has bore scoring, but you know, it is an old high mileage engine and it's had plenty of opportunity in its lifetime to begin to shed that ironclad coating over the forged pistons that are in this thing. And that is what actually leads to bore scoring. This is just oil, by the way, just from taking the head off. But so far, these cylinders look almost identical to what the boxers looked like. We did see these little like cracks in the locker sill. There's nothing on the surface. It's just kind of like a visual crack. So far, so good for bank one. Obviously we haven't turned the crank at all to see for sure. Um, but you know, like I said, we're gonna have these case halves apart pretty soon here and we'll be able to get a really, really good look into these things. So let's move on to bank two. Alrighty now, same deal. We're gonna go ahead and take off those tiny little bolts. This is it. This is bank two. This is the one that if we're seeing bore scoring in this engine at all, it will most likely have started on this bank. So here's where we find out if this engine has any level of bore scoring. Okay. Let's go. 
Well, here's my cylinders for bank two. And cylinder six does have some scoring. I would say it's very, very early scoring. It's not, you know, bad, but you can see uh, there's some marks on this side, a little bit up on the top there. And then there's a few little score marks down here. So true confessions, uh, I did kind of have a feeling that that was going to be happening. Uh, even though I said, you know, I have no indications of bore scoring in my engine. I didn't have any like audible ticking sounds uh, from bore scoring. My guess is that it would have been maybe a matter of another year or so before I would really start to hear that ticking sound uh, just from what I'm seeing right there. But in my last oil analysis, it came back as being higher in aluminum than what it had for the previous six or seven reports that I've done on this engine. For these engines, if you haven't seen it in the past and you do see it all of a sudden, it is pretty indicative that you are having some level of bore scoring starting to happen. My guess is this is pretty recent, but you know, again, this engine is of that age and mileage where these things start to happen. So what's gonna be very interesting to see is once we get the case halves apart, or just what these pistons look like to see how much, if any, of that ironclad coating is coming off. And uh, if so, then obviously the theory for how bore scoring starts as a result of that ironclad coating coming off is either going to be proven or disproven by this engine. Well, you guys, I'm freaking itching. I want to get into these case halves as much as possible. Unfortunately, we have a little bit of work to do. First, uh, we have to take off the intermediate shaft flange. We have to take off the oil sump on the very bottom here. Oh, and of course, I need to readjust my engine mount so that um, it is mounted to only one case half because <laughs> currently it's mounted into both case halves and I can't separate the case halves. <sighs> it's getting weird. It's getting weird. I'm still setting records at this thing. Look at this. Look at this. It's so tiny. I'm not rolling up these sleeves. They're just that small. Fitment, baby. Well, as you just saw, we got the engine put up on the stand. And I've got it flipped over right now because the next thing to do is to pop off the oil sump. I've got my FVD Brombacher deep sump, which I have done a video on previously. So if you missed that, go check that out if you're interested in what's uh, going on with this particular situation here. But basically we are in the home stretch with regards to getting the case halves apart. The last thing we really have to do is get this off, like I said, but there are some case bolts within the oil sump. So obviously we need to take that off. Plus the fact that it is literally holding these two case halves together so we just need that out of the way but once that's off then we'll go ahead and go around and do all the case half bolts let me explain what i did uh with regards to the engine stand like i said we need to get the case halves separated and so what i do to do that is you mount the engine just on one of the case halves you can see i've got the one uh arm of the engine stand just sitting idle there and then i've got it in th into three holes right now all of which are on the, the bank two side right now so that once we get the sump off we can turn the engine basically vertically uh, and then pull the case half straight up. Uh, prior to that, you saw me messing with the IMS bearing flange. Flange came off no problem, and it was sealing up pretty well. Bearing looks fantastic. There's absolutely no play in it, and obviously you probably saw that move around because, well, the chains are untensioned, the oil pump is off, and there's literally nothing holding that IMS shaft in there right now. Let's get to popping this sump off. Well, the sump is off. So anyway, we are at the point now where we can start separating the case halves. You guys, I am very, very intrigued to see what the state of the intermediate shaft timing chain guide and tensioner are. Honestly, I think there's gonna be some serious carnage. Plus, I'm really, really, really eager to see the condition of the piston skirts. This engine was in perfectly good, perfectly running condition. I would trust it to drive from my house in Ohio to San Diego 
but obviously it's old, it's aging, and you know the things that age on these engines are aging in this engine. So it's just gonna be very interesting to see what a, what a well-sorted, good condition one of these engines with high mileage is actually looking like internally. Not to mention well-maintained. I mean, this thing has been babied, you know, and as you guys know, I do everything under the sun preventative maintenance wise to, to keep this car in general just running tip top. It'll be super interesting to see what all these internals look like, bearings, piston skirts, intermediate shaft, timing chain guide and tensioner. I'm so excited to do the parts analysis once we get all this thing separated and apart. So with that, I will shut up now and let's actually get to doing it. As you just saw, we got all the case half bolts removed. Uh, just got you guys working equal and opposite me real quick. Sorry that you're upside down, but let's work together on this. So last two bolts before getting the case apart are the bearing carrier bolts. There's one here and there's one here. I believe you guys can see that from this camera angle. The other side of the engine bank two only has one bolt and it is this one. It does not have the one that's on the inside next to the timing chain. So let's go ahead and zap those bolts. Look at that, all that beautiful oil. Dude, the good news about Redline oil is it's the best oil on the market, literally not sponsored. I'm just saying like, it is truly the best. But the bad news about it is it's the best freaking oil on the market. So then when you get it on your garage floor or in your hands or whatever, it becomes pretty difficult to do things. As you can imagine, wearing rubber gloves that are nicely lubricated. And when you're doing a thing like this, make sure that you're not prying on it too hard. There's always a chance that you that you missed a bolt. There was a zillion bolts as you just saw. It's very possible that I missed one even though I checked and then double checked. You'll feel the difference between a bolt actually holding it down and just silicone that has yet to free up. So be patient, don't push it. The only thing holding this in is the silicone and then these three pistons, just the ring tension on the wall. Okay, see, yeah, just like that. I felt it separate, so. Oh yeah. Have this side free. This. There it is. That was what we needed. Okay. Now pull up as straight as you can. All right. Bank one done. Now comes the not fun part. I literally hate this part so much. That bearing carrier is so freaking heavy. So fighting against that, plus the ring tension on the walls, not fun. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Wow, yeah, this is bank one also. I mean, remember how we were talking about the ironclad coating on these pistons that fails? Oh yeah, oh yeah. This is only bank one. I am so interested to see bank two. <laughs> yeah, you guys are staring right at one right there. That's a nice big chunk that's missing. All right, just to give you guys the satisfaction really quick of just checking this out. We're gonna do a full-blown parts analysis episode, but just to give you a look at this. So this is what happens. This ironclad coating, which covers the forged aluminum piston skirt. The purpose of this is so that you don't have the aluminum cylinder liner contact with the aluminum piston. This ages with heat or, you know, especially during cold starts, etc., etc., and will eventually start to break down. This was supposed to be a lifetime coating, but obviously it's not. And when you look at this cylinder or this piston too, this is the very early stages of failure. When you look at the cylinders that are completely scored up, this pad is just not even not even existent anymore. This, this one's the same way. It's got a lot of a lot of marks taken out of it there. I mean, that's just a matter of time until that the whole rest of that ironclad pad is chunked away and gone for good. The other side of this actually looks really good. 
There's like nothing wrong with that one. It's just been used, that's all. Okay, I'm gonna shut up. We do have that one more bearing carrier bolt on the bottom side, holding that in to the uh, bank two case half. So I just gotta zap that out really quick and then we can lift that thing out. All right, like I said, this thing weighs a ton. Plus it is very awkward because we need to, as we lift this thing up, the intermediate shaft comes with it and it's just free floating. Yeah. So we kind of have to hold it while we juggle the weight of this and pistons and there's not a great place to grab onto. It's just an all-around weird situation. Well, everyone, check it out. We've got the engine completely torn down. We are at that halfway point where everything is apart. Now it's just time to start buying parts, go to the machine shop, and start working towards getting everything back together so that we can drive that beautiful steed right there. So I think we're gonna go ahead and call it for today. We've done a lot. We got the thing completely stripped down. But first, before we do that, I wanna show you guys what the IMS timing chain tensioner and guide looked like. All right, now here's all the stuff. Just know that in the next video, we are gonna do a very thorough analysis of every single part that could possibly be worn in this engine. We'll look at timing chains, we'll look at piston skirts more in detail, we're gonna look at main bearings, we're gonna look at big end connecting rod bearings, we're gonna look at the cylinder walls to see how scored up they are. But because I kinda dangled the old IMS timing chain tensioner wear in front of your faces earlier, I figured, I'd follow through and show you. So here's what we got for the actual guide. As you can see, overall, not bad, but there is quite a bit of deep pitting right there on this side. And you can see from about here to where my thumbnail is right here, you can see the score lines in it. And these are like the pretty normal wear lines. This is what just kind of happens when the guide gets bedded in. But this right here, this pitting, that is what you don't want. But this one actually isn't even that bad. Let's look at the tensioner side. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you can tell, but yeah, there's a nice lip right there. Like, I don't know, I would say that's like an eighth of an inch almost and all of this pitting. Obviously there's some meat left on the bone here, but you know, I don't love running the timing chain guide when I'm just seeing bits of it in my oil filter every single time I do an oil change. And the other part of it is you can't see inside your engine to be able to tell what these are looking like. So as far as I knew, these things were just totally disintegrated and about to chunk apart, like down to nothing. But fortunately, these did have some mileage left in them. Even still, I'm glad we're doing this now and it's gonna be very satisfying to put the brand new ones back up in the car. But look at this though, you can even see, like you know, like I said, we have the lip, but you can see where the links for the chain are rubbing up against, like it's that deep to where there's two different levels here, two different lips. Basically, this is what I'm talking about. Like this part of the chain, it's, it's deeper than this here to where this has even started to sink in to the guide probably about that far. So yeah, that's, uh, that's not an insignificant amount of wear just to show you for scale. So that's that. I just wanted to show you guys, you know, at least something, do a little bit of parts analysis before we end this video today. But stay tuned for the next video because like I said, we're gonna be doing a very in-depth analysis of every single part here. It's gonna be the most USDA approved M96 engine on the planet. So I'll just, I'll just, I'll give myself that credit. You know, we're setting records wearing this freaking sport coat, teeny tiny little sport coat, and doing all this work, and we're gonna make the beefiest M96 on the planet. We're setting records. All jokes aside, thank you so much for being here today. You guys are the absolute best. I appreciate each and every one of you. Yes, you. My hands are very oily. And I will see you all in the next episode. Stay safe out there. Keep on doing the thing. Later. Oh, hey, fun ahead, friends and family. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see even more great Fun Ahead TV content, please click the suggested video right here. I'll see you over there. Oh, wow. No. Mm. <laughs> what?